If you're looking at doing an engine swap on your classic VW for, let's say, a Subaru or a Golf or something, or more specifically, a gearbox swap, you may find that your new clutch is hydraulic. Now, on mine, I've got a late model 091 gearbox so from a T25, um, and that's hydraulic. So uh, if you go online, you can look for pedal clusters, so you get the full pedal clusters with the brake and accelerator, um, or you can actually just buy the, the clutch ones, which I think they do some just for a bug, so it fits amongst the pedals as well. Um, but it's talking quite big money. Um, for the full clusters, you're looking well over a grand for some of them. Um, and as you know, that's not how we do things on this channel. So this is how we've made ours. So these are my pedals. Uh, now this car is a 1972. It's right hand drive because here in the UK. Um, I say the pedals, to all intents and purposes, are completely bone stock. Uh, however, they're not because the clutch is hydraulic. Uh, it doesn't pull a cable, it actually pushes a clutch master cylinder. So at the other side it looks quite stock too. So all this is as it should be. Uh, you've got your accelerator in there, obviously for a right drive bug as I mentioned before. Uh, but we do have this extra bit here. So we have a rod which fires through to a hydraulic master cylinder um, and a bolt which comes out the side of the tunnel which runs along a groove which has been cut into there. Look. It's only a small one, it doesn't have to be a massive one. Ew, a few winters have taken a toll under here. Um, so we have our bog standard brake master cylinder under here uh, underneath the fuel pump and on the other side of our frame head is a master cylinder for our clutch. So it's a completely standard T25 master cylinder. Um, so it's just been bolted to the frame head and not in a special way at all, just on a little spacer. Uh, and that's basically what the, the adaptation on the pedals now uh, presses. Um, so the pedals on the inside, the extension part we've, we've added, which I'll show you shortly, uh, presses that and then that feeds the slave cylinder at the back of the car. Uh, if you look at the pipe and follow that up past where the fuel tank used to be, uh, that just goes to an oil reservoir, which is a completely bog standard brake reservoir, which I just basically tie wrapped onto the side. Uh, I was going to change it, but it's worked well ever since, so I never, never got around to changing it. Um, so we've got our oil reservoir down to our master cylinder, um, which our pedals press, and then uh, that feeds the slave at the back of the car. So at the side of my 091 gearbox down here is the T25 um, slave cylinder. So it's a completely stock cylinder um, and that's attached to a uh, Arjez um, bracket. So it's an Arjez bell house and it comes with an Arjez bracket for the slave cylinder there. Uh, and that's how it attaches. The original one used to be pointing the other way around, so it's kind of pointing downhill. Um, this newer version has the bleed at the bottom, which can make uh, actually bleeding the system a bit of a pain in the bottom. Um, it was done like that to keep it away from the turbo. Um, but it does mean when you bleed it, you have to disconnect the slave cylinder, turn it the other way around so it bleeds up in the air. Then you have to bleed it, keep the piston compressed, which is right fight when you're doing it by yourself. Um, and bolt it on before you can release it. Um, so yeah, it does take a bit of doing. Um, but other than that, it seems to work quite well. Uh, this is the part that failed. Um, and I was on the motorway, so the cup there, um, I don't know if it was the cup actually failed and broke the ball off the arm, or if it was the other way around, if the um, the ball sheared off the arm and it caused the cup basically to go into the side of the turbo. Um, and yeah, I'll show you what problems that caused uh, in a little bit. So, we've got our master, we've got our slave, and I'll uh, show you the pedals in a bit more detail. So before we start making modifications, I thought I'd just show you what will be the Mark 1, the first version of this pedal set we created. Um, now, I don't actually remember being heavily involved in creating this, um, so I've probably got a massive thanks to say to my father um, for the design at the very least. Um, now, these have been on the car for about five years, and they've been working well. It worked, worked well for the first uh, three or so, and then um, slowly they started to, to work less well. Um, until I had a breakdown last year uh, but I'll explain all that in a second so these pedals are completely standard basically um, the, obviously it doesn't push up into the air they push forwards um, but it's laid on the bench um, and the part we've modified is the clutch end here 
So at the clut end where you'd normally have a hook, the hook would uh, normally attach to your clutch cable. Um, that was drilled through and a pin put in its place. Uh, so it's a 12mm pin or it's actually a cut down bolt I believe. Uh, so it's not got any thread on there at the end part. Uh, that then connects to a rather chunky connector rod. On the connector rod a nut was welded on. Uh, that's basically because when you're in the tunnel it's almost impossible to get tools in there to, to get a nut on something. Um, so it means that the bolt here could be just fed through the side of the tunnel and screwed in place. So we have our bolt going to our connector rod uh, and the bolt then goes to uh, the rod to the uh, clutch master cylinder. So it kind of operates kind of like that. Obviously it's pushing forwards rather than up in the air. And on the whole it works quite well. Now about two years ago on the way to Bug Jam I had a breakdown on the motorway. Um, and the rod which connects uh, the slave cylinder at the back of the car um, to the um, arm on the activation arm on the side of the gearbox well that arm failed um, it sheared the, the ball sheared off the end of it and what happens is the rod on the, the back of the car basically moved off it off the arm and it hit against the side of the turbo uh, so it locked solid and like a complete and total plonker Rather than going, oh, let's try and fix it, I stomped on it as hard as I physically could. <laughs> and then something was a bit stuck. Um, and that did it in absolutely no favours. Um, and I believe that is why uh, this um, now is no longer a hook, this pin here, that arm there is actually bent. So I don't know if you can see on the camera, um, it's kind of bent in. Uh, I suspect that's the damage I did, um, say, when I stomped on it insanely hard when there was no no play to move in there at all uh, and after that point everything got a little bit more stiff and sticky um, so once we fixed the slave cylinder issue it uh, it was no longer such a good pedal set uh, now I suspected that this bolt here had bent because of the the length it's it stuck out by I thought it might have twisted and bent uh, but it's only until now I've taken it apart I can see what's gone wrong so we have a bend in the the part here so what we're going to do with mark 2 version I'm going to strengthen this and we'll straighten the hook again uh, put a new pin in that's going to be high tensile um, and I'm going to double that up I'm going to weld a new um, plate onto it so that can't bend anymore um, but what's happened is if you look at the connector rod um, that elongated so that's either elongated due to wear or um, the fact I stamped on it so hard I suspect most of it is actually down to wear general wear and tear um, what's obviously happened is as it started to wear and you push the pedal that happens so it goes out of line when that goes out of line this goes out of line and then this if you can probably see is also bent a bit like a banana we've got a bend in there look so obviously it's gone to the side a bit as it depressed it and then it's actually bent this this connector rod to the master cylinder as well so basically this section I'm now going to replace we're going to do mark 2 version um, so we're going to replace the pin with the high tensile bolt, strengthen this hook. This is going to be a high tensile bar um, I've ordered. Um, so hopefully it won't wear, it should be highly wear resistant um, based on the steel I've bought for it. We're going to replace that with a tensile bolt regardless even though that's actually not failed at all. And then hopefully we'll have a, a much better operating Mark II version. There is one modification I'm going to make to the setup which I think will improve things slightly. Uh, is when I remake this part here, I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Um, so I'm planning to make it about 10 mil longer. Uh, that in theory will give me a, um, a faster activation of the clutch, a little bit more throw. Um, also, as it wore, I started to do that. Um, I don't think I was getting full activation of the master cylinder. Um, so basically, when I put it into reverse gear, it would crunch. Um, so I don't think the clutch was fully disengaged all the time. Uh, certainly going into reverse um, and I think that was probably the reason why that happened um, but having a longer arm in there is going to make sure I've got uh, say full activation of that master cylinder um, and a slightly quicker clutch pedal at the same time and I don't think 10mm on there is going to make too much difference in terms of strength or uh, uh, how hard it will be to press okay so I have removed the, the pin that was previously welded into the, the hook which attaches to the clutch cable or the original clutch cable 
So I created a template on cardboard, so I basically drew around the, the hook and the, the end of the pedals, uh, which is that shape there. I want to extend the um, the pin further 10 mil up, so I created a second copy. And this is our new piece we're going to create uh, the new hole for the, the bolt. From that I created two metal copies, um, and we need to shape around the, the bottom here so it sits on the shaft nicely. Because I'm attaching to the shaft in two different places, one on the large diameter part there and one on the smaller diameter, um, I've basically got two rings on here which we're going to cut out separately. So these will be very slightly different to each other. Like so. Next we've got to remove the hook completely. I'm just going to chop it off, remove that completely. Um, and then I'm going to make this, this flange section nice and round so we've got something to weld onto at the top here. So the hook removed, it's not completely round, but it didn't need to because it's a bit of a weird shape. Um, and our new plate should sit on there quite nicely. Looks something like that. Now I really struggled with this next bit. Um, I had to replace this uh, bar and I was looking for something high tensile, but I couldn't find any high tensile flat bar as this is to, to directly replace it. Um, so in the end I ended up buying a, a short length of high tensile rod or bar, I guess. Um, now I was quite impressed, I was quite happy with myself, quite chuffed, blame me on trumpet and that going, oh, it's brilliant. So I spent a long, long time cutting um, the spar down to make it a usable section. Um, I spent a long, long time and bought an expensive drill bit to do it, to cut my, my holes through there and it took ages. I mean, we're talking an hour or so each time. Um, I eventually got through it all and when I had, rather frustratingly, the holes, it's not a massive amount, a slightly out of line. Um, I think when you can chop it down, it'll be such a small amount, it won't make that much difference. Um, but I did have a more than one attempt, and every time I drilled it, it wouldn't go through in a straight line. And basically, I think that's because my drill bit, my drill uh, press is a piece of poo, to be quite frank. Um, and I was struggling to clamp it down as well, because uh, this just wouldn't hold it firm enough. I actually clamped it down so hard, I ended up snapping the uh, clamp in the end. Um, so yeah, I was majorly struggling with this part of the, uh, the project. Um, now, I did have an idea to replace this with kind of like rose joints. Obviously it can't be rose joints because it can't twist, it, um, otherwise it would put all the strain onto that part which clearly isn't strong enough to do that. Um, so I was looking for something like a loop with a bronze bush at each end and, a, and some kind of link bar between it. But I didn't know what to search for or what, to cut, what it would be called or anything. Um, um, what a fixed rose joint is or anything like that. So in the end I went with this option and basically had to make my own. Um, which I think will be okay. So beefed up pedals number two. Almost there. I've got to get the welder out now and, and tack it all together. Put it all together. Uh, so basically we've got our two arms now on here. So we've got twice the amount of steel on there um, than the original hook. So hopefully that's not going to bend. Uh, we've got a tensile bolt now which we need to chop off. So that becomes a, uh, a tensile stud. And I need to zap it onto the back of here so it doesn't move. Um, so I'll try and do it carefully without putting too much heat into there. Uh, I've got a new high tensile um, connector bar. This knot needs welding onto the back of there and so that it's fixed. And then, that, then this tensile bolt can then be threaded through from the outside of the tunnel. Um, and I just need to heat this up and, and straighten it, hopefully without snapping anything off. Okay, the pedals are back together. I've stripped them all down, re-greased everything so it's all nice and slidey. Um, straighten the, the push rod here and let's go and uh, fit it in the bug and see if it works. Now because we've increased the size of this section here uh, we have a little problem getting through the tunnel so basically that will no longer go through that hole which it previously did with the hook on. So basically we're going to remove the clip and I'm going to push this back through and basically we'll get it through the, through the hole and we'll have to reconstruct it on the other side which will be fiddly but pedals are fiddly anyway. So it wasn't exactly plain sailing. Um, I believe this part was catching in the tunnel. Now, uh, originally the, the part kind of went in the tunnel on a horizontal plane like that as it, as it activated. Um, but because I've increased the length of the arm on the pedals, um, this kind of flicks up a bit. So it kind of moves in that motion more now. Um, and as a consequence, this corner, I believe, was catching on the metalwork inside the tunnel, as I say. So basically I've shaped it so it looks nice and sexy and round. 
um, and hopefully it's not going to catch anymore. Nope, that didn't sort it. <laughs> I think it's actually a lot more simple than I thought. I think I've just left this stud a little bit too long and it's catching on the side of the tunnel. Nope, that didn't work either. So, I don't think it was this that stuck out too far. I now think it's the lobe at the top there. Uh, that was sitting on the piece of metal which goes in the tunnel like that. Uh, so basically I've re reduced this outer lobe. So it's no taller now than the actual bar itself. Third time lucky. We have working pedals again. Working nicely. Um, I was going to put a clip on the end of this video to finish um, of the car started and getting reversed and stuff. Um, I can't really do that at the minute because the car's in a thousand pieces, so doing fuel lines and bits and pieces, which you'll probably see if you keep watching this channel um, over the next few weeks. Uh, but I hope that helps if anyone's out there trying to make their own custom hydraulic clutch. Um, so hopefully it'll be a bit helpful for you. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.